Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. Good topic? Let's do it. You won't believe your eyes. The terrifying encounter that no one believed was real. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. This is pretty out there, but when I was a child with asthma, my mother gave me some medication, but it got worse, so she gave me more medication, but the two aren't supposed to mix. I started tripping balls, as a three-year-old trip, I guess, and saw a skeleton woman in a black robe. I started hysterically screaming, and my parents had me sleep on a cot in the hallway with the lights on. I kept referring to her as Ass Mona. My guess is from my mom mentioning the asthma medication and me moaning or something. Little kid stuff. Flash forward eight years or so. Different house, different city. I was getting out of the shower and looked in the mirror. It was Asmona. I screamed and climbed into a bunker and covered myself with blankets, freaking out until my parents found me. My best guess is that it was just fog on the mirror that somehow looked close enough to what I hallucinated as a toddler that it unlocked a repressed memory and caused me to panic. I tried to tell my parents about it, but they both just laughed and said I was making up both incidents. I was walking back to our camping spot in a fairly remote Christian camp with my friend down a trail I knew like the back of my hand. I grew up just down the hill from this trail and have walked the trail hundreds of times. This time though it was pitch black and we only had a lighter to be able to navigate. We're about 500 feet from the tent and we walk along a part of the trail that has a hill that rises above it. Above the hill the trail curls back onto itself and our campsite is right there. As we get to this part of the trail, I hear a loud thud sound in the leaves, but at first I thought of it as a bird on some loud leaves. Then I hear very clearly the sound of an animal running up behind us. The sound stops abruptly, and then suddenly it lands above us on a small cliff edge directly above us. Mentally I was thinking it was a deer that jumped up the hill. It was about a 20 foot jump, so I knew it was a big animal. My friend struggled to light his lighter, but when he did, what I saw will forever be burned into my brain. Up the hill directly above us was a set of large cat eyes. I knew immediately it was a mountain lion, so I grabbed my friend by the shirt and quietly told him not to run. This was not the first time seeing a mountain lion, but it was the first time I had one staring directly at me, only 10 feet away. We slowly kept walking up the trail and it slowly followed us until it got to a part of the trail where thick brush prevented it from following us up the hill. However, we now had about 200 feet to walk to our tent, and we had to walk back in the mountain line direction. We couldn't see it at this point, but we could see the trees of our tent that were under it. With about 100 feet left, we ran to the tent as fast as we could and made it into it without incident. Once in there, we found a flashlight and started watching out of the tent, and within a minute, the mountain lion walked into the beam of our flashlight. It circled our tent for about a half an hour. We watched it lay down and groom itself, roll around on its back, and generally seemed just curious about us. It went from being the scariest situation of my life to just watching a beautiful animal being itself in its habitat. Me and my cousin used to rent out a one-bedroom apartment while in university. The door to the bedroom was on the left of the beds. We always kept the light in the hallway open and the door open. One night, I woke up from a bad dream, looked up, and saw someone standing at the door. He was clearly a tall, skinny dude, but couldn't see his face. I thought it was my cousin until I realized she was not six feet tall. I nodded inside my bank and forced myself to fall back asleep. The next day, my cousin said she had a dream and saw someone standing at the door. That was enough to freak me out, and we changed departments. The last time I had COVID, it was pretty bad. High fever on and off for days, extreme fatigue, confusion, and breathing problems. I nearly died, but I started to come out of the worst after a week or so. It was about two weeks into it, after the fever had subsided, but well before I was off of bed rest. It was about 2 a.m. and I couldn't sleep, so I was lying in bed reading. At 2 on the dot, I suddenly heard the sound of my grandma's 
grandfather's clock chiming the hour. I glanced at my phone. Yep, 2 a.m. It took me a moment to realize that we don't have possession of my grandma's clock. We don't have any kind of clock that chimes like that. But I was hearing it very clearly coming from our living room. It didn't sound close to me. It sounded exactly like it would be coming from the other room. I know that this was an audio hallucination brought on by my illness or the medicine. I've never experienced anything like it before or since. My husband thinks I just dozed off and was dreaming, but I was wide awake. I remember looking at the clock on my phone. The sound was so clear and perfectly natural, not distorted at all. It was very disturbing to hear my dead grandma's clock suddenly chiming like that. We used to go on late night drives with my friend in high school. We once saw a creature we can hardly explain to this day. Once, while we were driving, we saw this hairless bear, pig, or naked man scamper past the front of the car on all fours and just fully disappear. I don't know if it was a wild animal with mange or alopecia or what it was, but it was most certainly otherworldly, and I've never forgotten about it. One day, I was happily brushing my teeth when I saw a shadow over my shoulder and figured it was my husband. Once I'm done, I go to his office in the next room, but as soon as I'm about to leave for the corridor, he shows up with an alarmed face. I tell him he can go brush his teeth now, since he was waiting in the bedroom a little before. He looks even more alarmed and tells me, I just came to a room to ask you what you needed. You just stood silent behind me by my office door a minute ago. I did not sleep well that night. I was out exploring the desert and farmlands near Yuma, Arizona with my friend a few years ago. It was a nice windy day. We were hiking or rock hunting. All of a sudden, the wind stopped and it was completely silent. It was an alarming sensation. Just all the noise and wind stopping. As we looked around in confusion, we saw a black mist walking around off in the distance. I'd say a good 50 yards. We thought maybe it was a swarm of flies or something, trying to rationalize it, but nope, it was a misty figure. We stood there trying to figure out what it was. It seemed like it saw us and started coming in our direction. We got freaked out and ran back to our car. It was a black mist moving like a person. It was kind of like a black TV static that was translucent. It looked like it was rock hunting as well. Whatever it was, it was searching for something. I was driving at night with a college girlfriend, and we wanted to fool around a little bit, so I pulled over to the side of an empty West Virginia road. We did this frequently, so it was nothing unusual for us. The forest isn't scary if you grow up there. This time, though, I had a very disturbed feeling deep in my chest. I felt scared. I didn't say anything to my girlfriend about it, of course, because it was very important for me to be Mr. Cool Guy. I very quietly locked my door and tried to push that feeling down. There were fireflies in the forest a few hundred feet to our right. It's an incredible thing to witness if you ever get the chance. They were beautiful as they flickered on and off through the trees, all of them. And that is except one. One firefly did not flicker. It stayed illuminated. I tried to focus on my hormonally driven priorities, getting handsy with my girlfriend, but I couldn't shake the sinking feeling of being watched. It was such a strong feeling, and it was coming from the spot in the forest where the fireflies were. I looked up, and one firefly was getting closer. The unblinking firefly. It was not wavering, not flickering, not flying here and there. It was slowly flying toward me, straight as a beam of light, directly towards me at about five or six feet off the ground. It didn't deviate in the slightest or get blown around by the wind. It flew closer, closer closer, not blinking, and then it stopped, 15 feet from me. The unblinking firefly stopped in the forest, right at the edge of the trees, a single golden dot watching me unmoving. The feeling of fear rose. It grew so strongly in me that I quickly shifted away from my girlfriend, hormones be damned, centered myself back in the driver's seat, turned the key and hit the gas. As we began moving, the firefly held that same position, 15 feet away from me right at the edge of the forest, unblinking, unwavering, and now it was matching our speed. The fear flooded out of my chest and throughout my body. My limbs and neck went cold. I floored it, and the firefly still kept up. 
I didn't manage to shake it off until I was about five or six hundred feet down the road. Epilogue. We drove in silence for about ten minutes. My girlfriend said, Something felt really wrong back there. I'm really glad we left. I looked across the car to the passenger side. She had quietly locked her door, too. I don't know what it was, but it scared the F out of me. Basically, I was an 18-year-old who smoked weed in my car because my parents were strict AF. I had smoked for years, so I knew what the effects were, and yes, smoking and driving are bad, but you tell that to an 18-year-old. Anyway, I went to a local spot that was near my house in suburbia, but up a really long hill. It was a lookout on a hill in a remote area. The only way you'd get there was by car. It was the best place to smoke because it was remote. Anyway, I get there and there are no cars. It's late at night and dark. I put on some music and set up my bong, smoked a few bowls, sat the bong down in my center console and texted a friend, saying that I would meet him in an hour to hang out. I sat there looking into the darkness, and you could see the sky as well from where I was sitting. It seemed very peaceful, all alone. Next thing I know, I hear a stick crack about three meters from my car, like someone had stepped on it. I flicked my lights on so I could see and there was nothing. I freaked out a little bit, eventually calmed down and took another hit, that'll help. Just as I went to pack another bowl, I heard another stick crack, but this sounded closer, I had my window down. I flicked the lights again, but there was nothing. That's when I looked toward the night sky and saw a human looking silhouette stand up. It was unmistakable. Someone or something had been watching me for the past 30 minutes. I started the car, slammed it into reverse, and noped the F out of there. As I went down the hill, I remembered the bong sitting there. I needed to pack it away, but it was loaded. I stopped at the start of a fire trail, access for fire trucks blocked by a gate. I figured, why waste good weed? And went to finish what I had packed, and just as I lit it up, I heard the gate behind my car rattle. Then I heard a noise on the back of my car. Again, I noped out of there as fast as I could, packing the bong up as I sped down the hill. I got to my friend's house and told him what had happened. My theory now is that some kids did walk up the hill that night, saw me pull in, and watched me smoke for 30 minutes, then maybe decided to approach me. The sound at the gate was probably a possum. Either way, it haunts me to this day. I was in Johannesburg driving when a man in the street gestured that I had a flat tire. When I stupidly opened my window, he demanded my cell phone, or I will shoot you, Wena. He also demanded my GPS. I tried to close the window, but he put his hand on the door and repeated his threat. I couldn't drive off as I was stuck between two cars with this thug threatening me. I desperately looked in my car for anything to use as a weapon as he repeated his threat. For some reason, I just got fed up and shouted, You! And he said, Okay! And ran away. It was completely surreal, and my feet on the pedal were shaking. I don't know if people believe it, but they don't seem to think it was a big deal. To me, it was. When I was a teenager, I liked to go on night walks. I lived in suburbia, and it was dark and quiet and peaceful and safe. On this occasion, I was talking to a friend on the phone, like 11 p.m. or 12 a.m., and I was heading home along the side of the road, which was just a couple of streets away. For some reason, I looked behind me, and I saw a big black car, no engine noise, lights off, slowly following me a few meters away. Once they saw me turn and look at them, they put their headlights on high beam, slammed on the acceleration, zoomed towards and then passed me, turned the corner up ahead, and were out of there. I was like, oh, f went weak need, got to the end of the road where they had made the turn and sat down on the curb. I just needed to calm down. I thought they had gone. I was telling my friend about it and then the car came back down the street, saw that I was still there or perhaps was looking for me, put their high beams on again and drove straight at me before turning at the last minute and driving off. I then ran home, but I was in freeze mode so it felt like I could barely move my legs, and I also didn't want to head home right away in case they followed me. During COVID, I worked overnights at this company, putting up labels and boxing up orders. Everyone said they couldn't keep an overnight person for the shift. For years, people would just get up and quit because the air would get extremely cold all of a sudden, and they would hear loud banging all around them. People had quit in the middle of their shift before, 
I didn't believe in ghosts or anything like that, so I personally hoped something would happen to me. But careful what you wish for. It happened twice. The first time, I wasn't prepared and just left the room for about an hour. That morning, when MGT came in, I told them why I was behind. I thought I'd get fired, but they said they could tell I wasn't lying about what I'd heard and felt. I didn't even get a warning. The second and final time, I whipped my phone out and immediately began recording. I wanted proof and was scared shitless, but I recorded about three minutes. I've never uploaded it onto the internet before, and I've only shown it to a few people. Why not? If you were there, you'd become a believer too. I can honestly say I've never been that scared in my entire life. The only thing that ever compares was having a gun pointed at my head, and to be honest, that's a different kind of fear. Been doing this for a minute or two now, and whenever we come across stories of things people won't believe, but then they say they have proof of it, well, it, you have the solution, so just post it, and then everyone would be like, wow, I knew ghosts were real. Or don't. I watched my father scream at and terrorize me and my brother for two hours, spitting verbal abuse at us and telling us what garbage children we were, how stupid, unworthy, ungrateful, and disappointments we were. Then he tried to strangle my brother. This is what it's like to have a narcissist for a father. And no one will believe us because outside our home, he always played the role of a pillar of the community. He was charming, funny, and bragged about how proud he was of all his children. All an act. That was decades ago. I cut him out of my life. But I was never so scared in my entire life as I was when I was living with my father and mother. Late 90s, mountain trail in North Phoenix at dusk. I was climbing with a friend and her dad. I stopped for a minute to rest while they continued. I looked around and saw a small black aircraft land silently on a lower flat section. Kind of square proportions, very angular design. No obvious rotors or jet engines, probably about the size of an Amazon delivery van. A tall figure in what looked like a black suit and featureless gray mask appeared next to it without me seeing it get out or walk up, and just stood there without moving. I thought I heard my friend coming back and told her to come look, but when I turned around, she wasn't there. I looked back, the craft and figure were gone. I caught up to my friend at the top of the trail and asked, if they saw anything flying, but they hadn't. I've never seen anything like it since.